Hello, and welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Today, we're going to look at a prison which is in the north of England, HM Prison, Durham. Her Majesty's Prison, Durham, is a Georgian era reception category B men's prison. Located in the Alva area of Durham, in County Durham, which is in England. The prison was built in 1819 and the prison continues to be operated by Her Majesty's Prison Service. Female prisoners were housed at HMP Durham but they were moved in 2005 due to overcrowding and suicides. HM Prison Durham was built in 1810 consisting of some 600 cells and took its first prisoners in 1819. Durham Prison is adjacent to Durham's Crown Court. The prison has held a variety of different category prisoners, both male and female, over the course of its history. Between 1869 and 1958, 95 judicial executions took place on the gallows at Durham's prison or in the courthouse. In 1832, protests over the working conditions in South Shields workhouse were supported by minor strikes. Soldiers were sent to evict striking miners from their pubs. One miner was convicted of murder of a local magistrate near Jarrow Slake. He was hanged amid heightened security of 50 mounted hussars and 50 infantrymen who were there to protect the gallows. His body was gibbeted after death. On the 17th of December 1958, the final execution took place when Private Brian Chandler, who was aged 20, was hanged for the murder of Martha Dodd during the course of a theft. Mr Chandler was a soldier based at Catterick Camp who beat the 83 year old Mrs Dodd to death with a hammer. During the late 1960s and 1970s, the prison became a study project for Stan Cohen and Laurie Taylor, which led to their publication of three books, namely Psychological Survival, the Experiments of Long-Term Imprisonment, which was released in 1972, Escape Attempts, which was published in 1976, and Prison Secrets, which was released in 1978. Mr. Cohen additionally published Visions of Social Control, Crime, Punishment and Classification, which was published in 1985. Durham Prison, which was a Category A prison for men and women at the time, was praised in 2001 by Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons for its progressive regime, integration of inmates and falling levels of violence. However, in 2003 it was revealed that Durham had the highest suicide rate of all prisons in England. In 2004, a report by the Chief Inspector of Prisons criticised Durham for being severely overcrowded. The report highlighted the lack of education and work opportunities for inmates at the prison. In 2005, Durham's female high security wing, which housed 120 female prisoners, was discontinued and the prisoners were transferred elsewhere. After Her Majesty's Inspector of Prisons had made a report which concluded, following several suicides, that it was unsuitable for housing female prisoners. On the 13th of July 2011, it was announced that along with several other prisons, HMP Durham would be put up for market testing as part of the Ministry of Justice budget plan to make savings of almost 25%. A 2014 report by the HM Inspector of Prisons found that a third of inmates tested positive for drug use, a rate almost twice as high as would have been expected in similar prisons. Rates of violence were also higher than expected which indicated that monitoring should be improved. The prison was, however, praised for the quality of work activity and learning available to prisoners. Durham is currently a reception prison for remanded adults or young male prisoners. HMP Durham primarily serves the courts of County Durham, Tynham Ware, Teesside and Cumbria. The prison is divided into the seven wings, secure units, plus a segregation section and a healthcare section. The prison offers part-time education to all inmates, including courses on data input, bricklaying, woodwork, 
painting and decorating, waste management and gardening. Many notorious UK criminals have spent time at HMP Durham. Figures like Rose West, Ian Brady and Ronnie Gray have all walked its wings over the decades. The prison's head of residence and safety, Chris Carson, recently said to a local newspaper that the reality is, a lot of time, prison is quite a quiet and boring place. It's not the type of boisterous environment you see in the media where there is constantly violence and drugs going on. Generally, people are just trying to get on with their lives and sort out their problems. HMP Durham is no longer a high security facility. HMP Durham now operates as a reception prison, a sort of holding place for prisoners who are serving short terms or waiting for court appearances, or prisoners who are bound for other jails elsewhere in the country. Mr Carson went on to explain, there's a huge churn of prisoners with more than half coming and going every month and individuals ranging from cooperative and remorseful to very violent and destructive. It's a melting pot of people. Some people are only serving a few weeks for relatively minor offences. And then some people are killers waiting to find out where they'll spend the rest of their lives in jail. Mr. Carson went on to explain, for the prison officers who spend their working life locked up with them, the relationships with the men they guard can run much deeper than you think. There are definitely prisoners you see a lot of and you're like, I want the best for them, Mr. Carson said. The prison officers try to develop good relationships and reports with the men. Many people inside the jail do not have a chance to have conversations on a certain level when they are on the outside. In Mr. Carson's opinion, prison is a safe place to talk about problems that might be hard to talk about because of being macho on the outside. They may not want to show weakness. We can break them barriers down in prison. Following an inspection in 2018, a third of prisoners said they had developed a drug problem while at the prison and said that drugs at HMP Durham were easy to get access to. When asked about the drug problem at HMP Durham, Mr Carson said that tackling the drug problem takes up a huge amount of the prison's time and resources. We spend a lot of time working with the police and search team to cut it out. New technological equipment is being used to clamp down on it too. We are more aware of the drug problem than we used to be, and that means we're doing better at dealing with them. The report also found an alarmingly high level of violence, self-inflicted deaths and self-harm at HMP Durham. The security chief said that a big part of making sure the prison remains safe is keeping its inmates calm. To reduce frustration, there are opportunities for prisoners to work, take classes and spend up to an hour every day going outside. They can also go to the gym or attend religious services at the chapel. He also added, we offer a regime to try and reduce frustration within the prison. That's the best way of tackling violence. We do things to intervene and try and help people who come in with that sort of mental state. When arriving at HMP Durham, you will spend your first week on E-Wing, which is known as the First Night and Induction Unit. Whilst on the induction wing, you are usually offered a smoking pack or a food pack, and you will spend a week on the wing watching videos to understand the rules of prison and how everything works. After you've spent your time on the induction wing, you will then be allocated to the general population of the prison. There are four wings which have the general population in HMP Durham. A wing, B wing, C wing and D wing. Prisoners who come in for high risk crimes or have problems with other prisoners are usually sent to the VP wing. In HMP Durham, F wing is the vulnerable prisoners unit. Prisoners who are on the VP wing generally get to have their own education time, their own gym time, they eat at different times and they move around in the prison at completely different times. In HMP Durham is an integrated support unit with 17 beds for those with significant mental health problems. G-Wing is a segregation unit 
and a hospital unit which has six beds. As we mentioned earlier, HMP Durham has, since May 2017, been designated as a reception prison. At the time of the inspection in 2018, there were some 900 prisoners being held there, of which around 70% were either on remand or subject to recall. The prison itself dates back from the early 19th century and is located close to the centre of the city. Although the establishment was no longer designated as a local prison, it inevitably shared many of the features of other local prisons and indeed faced many of the same challenges. This was clearly reflected in the findings of the inspection where the prevalence of illicit drugs and high number of self-inflicted deaths as well as high levels of violence and self-harm and to top it all off, the influx of large numbers of new staff all featured prominently. The overriding concern of the report was around the lack of safety in the prison. Since the last inspection in October 2016, there have been seven self-inflicted deaths and it was disappointing to see that the response to the recommendation from the Prisons and Probation Ombudsman, or PPO, has not been addressed with significant vigour or urgency. There has also been further five deaths in the space of eight months, where it was suspected that illicit drugs may have played a part in the role. The ready availability of drugs in the prison was brought out in the inspector's report. Nearly two-thirds of prisoners told the inspectors that it was easy to get drugs and 30% told the inspectors that they had acquired a drug habit since coming in to HMP Durham. These were very high figures. The prison was well aware of the dangers posed by drugs and had developed the strategy to address the problem. However, the leadership of the prison was immensely frustrated by the fact they had no modern technology available to them to help them in their efforts to stem the flow of drugs into the prison. The inspectors had been told that they were promised some modern scanning equipment, but that equipment had been diverted to another prison. The scale of the problem at HMP Durham is very obvious and the obvious linkage to all kinds of violence were such that the inspectors suggested that technological support was urgently needed. Since the 2016 inspection, violence in the prison has doubled and the use of force by staff has increased threefold. The reason given for staff increasing the use of force may have been down to new staff who were not yet confident in using de-escalation techniques. When the inspectors visited the prison, they said that it was reassuring to see that the governance of use of force had improved and that the measures being taken to log and analyse the violence looked very promising. There were some very early signs that the level of violence was beginning to decline, but it was too early to be demonstrable as a sustainable trend or to affect our judgement that HMP Durham and its safety is very poor. Another serious concern brought up by the inspectors was that some 10% of the prisoners were assessed as presenting a high risk of harm to others, yet many of these were being managed by uniform offender supervisors who had neither the training, experience or adequate supervision to deal with this type of prisoner. The recent appointment of a senior probation officer will, the inspectors hope, reduced the risk posed by what the inspectors regarded as a significant vulnerability. The inspectors did have some positive things to say about the prison. The introduction of in-cell telephones and electronic kiosks on the wing for prisoners to make applications had undoubtedly been very beneficial. The disruption caused by prisoners needing to be taken to court had been reduced by the extensive use of video links. A new and more practical regime had recently been introduced, which was well received by staff and prisoners alike, increasing access to amenities such as showers and laundries on the wings. For a prisoner of this type, the time out of cell enjoyed by prisoners was reasonable, and it was quite apparent that, despite its age, the prison was basically clean and decent. 
It was also good to see that the leadership of the prison clearly regarded the influx of new staff as an opportunity to make improvements and not, as we have seen in a few prisons, an inexperienced liability. There was no doubt that there was an extent to which HMP Durham was still going through the process of defining, refining and responding to its role as a reception prison. The very large amount of prisoners coming in and out gave rise to the risk that taking them through the necessary processes could predominate over identifying individual needs and ensuring favourable outcomes. However, the prison was aware of this risk. The most pressing needs are to get to grips with the violence of all kinds, make the prison safer and reduce the flow of drugs. Only then will the benefits flow from the many credible initiatives which are being implemented. The number one governor of HMP Durham is Philip Husband, who has been in charge of the jail since August 2018. What are your opinions on HMP Durham? Have you or anyone that you know been to HMP Durham? What were your opinions of the jail? Also, what are your opinions on the Chief Inspector of Jail's report? Do you agree that HMP Durham does need technological assistance in its battle against the drug problem that it has? Please let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and share. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more Street Crime UK content, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you can join us on the next video. Thank you for joining us and until next time, stay safe.